What's going on guys? Thank you for tuning in to Late to Hoops. We're back with another recap. Today we're going to be talking about the 76ers going head to head with the Bucks and almost defeating them and the Lakers and Clippers. The Lakers almost coming back. We got a lot to talk about in this video, but we're going to get started with the 76ers and the Bucks first. So for starters, Giannis looked unstoppable, but kept. It didn't look like he was trying to barrel out there and put it all out there and risk it all kind of like how he was when he first discovered how great of a talent he really was compared to everyone else in the league but like i said he was very very kept in transition he was much smoother than in the years past i remember this one play specifically he was coming down on the left elbow after receiving an outlet from drew holiday and he just did this quick one two cross and it, it just looked so much more polished than in the years past and you can really see that the game time reps he's putting in are translating into this game time success and Giannis, he's just becoming a smarter player every year being able to distribute the ball and just find his teammates and speaking of the ability to find teammates, I wasn't the biggest fan of Grayson Allen, especially with his tenure at Duke and all, but I'm really, really proud to see the role that he's grown into. He's making the correct passes and he's shooting the looks that he's definitely earned on this team. He's kind of trying to replace that Dante DiVincenzo role. Obviously, he's balling out over in Golden State. I think he's going to do great things over there. And the Bucks, they just really played really great individual and team defense tonight. If you're a 76ers fan you'd probably say at the end of this that that was a no call on Harden at the last shot but I think if you're a Sixers fan you just live with it and take the next game because I think it was a good call especially after if you guys watched that game Tyrese did hit the ball out of bounds but the Bucks could not challenge it because they already used their challenge and you can't go back on those you can't review it especially when there's less than two minutes left in the game so honestly I think the Sixers they could have and should have won won this game but the problem was for starters Embiid looked human it's really really weird to say you know he was getting shots blocked he was a bit slower in transition to get back on defense but on the upside Harden he continued to look really really good boasting another 30 point game almost a triple double actually he had 31 points nine assists and eight rebounds and you can just tell he's really really starting to find his rhythm with his team that's what I kept telling myself last night as I was watching it especially after he had that full court pass to Tyrese Maxey right after the rebound it was kind of like a Kevin Love Ben Simmons Magic Johnson Lonzo Ball type of I, I know that's such a crazy four right there but that's just who I thought of when I saw this pass and it was just really really nice to see you know I don't think people understand that it's been quite the adjustment for him and like I said I just don't think people realize how different this system is compared to Houston or even most recently Brooklyn, the team he was just playing for. Last night, the 76ers made five three-pointers and attempted 24. Just because they played against the Bucks, I'll use games against the Bucks for reference. But if you compare the Rockets to the Bucks on March 9th, 2019, the Rockets attempted double the amount by shooting 48 threes that night, and they made over triple of them, making 18 of them. You can even compare the entire Eastern Conference semifinals in 2021. That Nets team averaged 41 three-point attempts per night during those seven games that they played. Harden is used to creating a much different look on offense for his teammates, and with that, it's just it's going to come growing pains. There's no other way to say that. I think we often forget, like we want Joel and Harden in this entire Sixers process to speed up and be so great right now. But I think people forget that this 76ers team hasn't even seen a year under its belt and we just have to give them more time. But with that being said, I have to let the cat out of the bag and just say again for the second time already in two for two on these recaps that Doc Rivers probably lost in this game. I said this like I said in the first night recap that Doc should probably just be fired. I have felt this way since 2018 on the Clippers. I'm surprised he got this head coaching job, especially when you consider the other people the 76ers have in their coaching staff like Sam Cassell, Dan Berg, Brian Adams. Like, I'm not saying these guys have to step up and become the head coach and fill 
those roles but i will say that i think these guys could step up and be in terms while we're you know having daryl morey and elton brand looking and finding someone new like i don't think this is a job where people will pass on it you know we're talking about being the head coach on a championship level team but with all that being said i would have to give the bucks an a and the 76ers a b minus honestly i thought about giving them a c plus but i'm just really happy with how harden's playing but like i said they could have and should have won this game as for the lakers and the clippers boy oh boy the lakers they were so inefficient again and brown played way too many minutes for them to lose this game russell westbrook's play through two it's just inexcusable at this rate just please go through rehab on your quad or shoulder or whatever it is that you're feeling injured with don't take the rest of this team down with you i'm begging you russell Westbrook shot 0 for 11 last night from the field, 0 for 6 from 3, and the Lakers shot even worse than the first night, if you can believe that. They shot 10 for 40 the first night. Tonight, they came out and shot 9 for 45 from 3, and 33 for 94 from the field. That's right. 35% from the field and 20% from the 3 is not going to win anyone a championship. Not to mention, the Clippers had 20 more rebounds than the Lakers. Avicius Zubac had 17 rebounds, LeBron had 10, Anthony Davis had 8, and the third highest rebounder on the Lakers was Juan Toscano Anderson with 4. The Clippers clearly just wanted it more. They went on a 17-0 run in the third quarter, and even the Warriors on the first opening night dominated the Lakers in the third quarter as well. They just need to step it up on defense, especially in the second half. I understand the season has just begun, but as a team that finished outside of the playoffs last year, I'd expect them to come in here with that urgency and not with dead legs and lazy effort. Anthony Davis is the only one who looks active on both sides of the ball full like 100% of the time I know LeBron has these crazy blocks and you might see Westbrook get poke steals and whatnot but I can't believe I'm saying this I'm seeing Anthony Davis go back to that 26 27 year old version of himself where he's 100% there on both sides of the ball as much as I'd love to solely put the Lakers on blast because they do talk very arrogantly and they do talk such a big game I will say I'm very very proud of the grit that they displayed here and the beginning of this fourth quarter and the end of the third quarter the last year's lakers would have just hung their heads up and given up having given up that 17 and 0 run but this year they really really did make it a game i think they ended up losing by six the final score was 103 to 97 i believe i'm just proud to see that the lakers actually put up a fight as for the clippers Kawhi came back looking smooth as ever when he entered the game and hit back-to-back -back mid ranges in probably less than a minute i know that first shot he got the rebound instantly ran to a spot and took a shot that probably took seven seconds and i was super hyped to see it a lot of people were giving me flack on that uh Kawhi is the closest thing to jordan video if you guys haven't seen it it's my most popular video so i'm sure you have if you're watching this video a lot of people gave me flack on that video but it's just shots like that and moments like that where people cannot stop him within 15 to 17 feet that make me just think wow this guy is truthfully truthfully in a class of his own Honestly, I just think Kawhi will keep finding his legs and continuing to work into that confidence, getting his legs under him. Like I said, he did miss a couple of threes, but I like that he kept shooting it. He actually hit one very, very contested, an important one at the end of the third quarter. And just like John Wall is working back into his confidence, I know that when that first pull up he took went in with the bottom of the net, it had to have felt good. All hoopers, you guys know that once you come back off an injury and that first shot goes in it just feels amazing john still looks so fast and he looks so ready to get after it and tonight he did hitting two huge mid-range shots in the last three minutes of last night's game i said it when it happened and i'll say it again it was a great pickup for the clippers to pick him up for such such a steal two years 16 maybe it was 12 million i think it was regardless we're talking about pennies on the dollars for what these nba players make the clippers trust for their depth show 
showed out tonight big in tonight's game they ran a lot of different rotations and they didn't even bring Kawhi until I think there was five minutes left in the second quarter and they didn't bring him back until they needed to when it was getting close again in the fourth quarter Paul George and Avicia Zubac while they may well Zubac had 17 rebounds so that was very impressive on the stat sheet while Paul George wasn't as impressive on the stat sheet tonight they both were impressive playing 36 minutes in just being the guys who have been in this system you know Ty Lu is starting to trust them fully. Obviously, he's had that trust for Paul George for a long time, but Zubak especially, he truthfully balled out tonight. It was not a pretty win, but they were hitting the big time shots when necessary. And I, I kept hearing Reggie Miller on the call talking about the Lakers last night saying, it doesn't matter if the Lakers keep missing shots in this game as long as they can hit the big time shots. And I think the Clippers showed exactly that tonight. Those are the tendencies that matter the most on a championship team every single guy was ready every single guy has to be ready from Kawhi Leonard to the guys like Luke Kennard or Terrence Mann or Marcus Morris whoever's getting these 10 to 20 minutes a night even five minutes a night the Clippers have been building something seriously special and I'm happy to see that the fan base is slowly starting to ride with them I was seeing on Twitter this morning that a lot of Clippers fans are very happy and rightfully so hopefully the media can continue to ignore and sleep on them a little bit so they can just stay locked in. Like I said, it was not a pretty win. I would give the Clippers a B plus tonight. I'm happy they got the win. I'm happy they went on that big run, but they should not have let up uh, even close. I think it was two, within two points with five minutes left in the fourth until Kawhi hit back to back crazy shots. It should not have happened like that. As for the Lakers, I'm going to give you guys a B. I'm really happy that Lonnie Walker played better tonight. I'm happy that I'm happy AR-15, even though he doesn't like to be called that, I'm happy that he hit that crazy crossover mid-range pull-up to tie the game up at 87 in the fourth quarter. I would say, yeah, a B. I mean, Ham looked great at that coaching role tonight. I would say a B is very fair. What would you guys rate the Lakers, the Clippers, the 76ers, and the Bucks? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe if you're new. I saw in my last video over 65% of you guys aren't subscribed. So it would really help grow this channel. I'm just trying to build a positive hoops atmosphere where everyone can just comment their opinions and just be, you know, cordial with each other. I appreciate all the support. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.